Yeah. Had to do this one. They see us on the streets and we beat, but I kinda class and got my people sleep, man. They sleep, huh? They pray upon the weak, trying to fold us. But leadership a full time job, they can't hold us. And we've been going hard for a minute, but it's only the beginning. Man, the scriptures gon' hold me down. Whitewash, now we only serve a white guy. Nice try, but your plans gon' backfire. Black matter gon' rule the world, I'm God's child. Black matter gon' fix it all when he cracked the sky. Black matter gon' turn us up, we can't die. Black matter gon' overpower your black Yeah, Hey, yeah. put the clock on 12, cause it's our time. time I told her we in hell and they thought marijuana We rock the streets like it's designer Plantin' seeds like gardens okay. We paving ways up in the streets like it's the night Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, most high in Christ, bless you all, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is, it's Shout Out Tuesday, that's right, it's Shout Out Tuesday. Now, I'm going to segue today's topic with a little bit of history regarding our plight in Spain, okay? Uh, let me open up with... Uh, Malachi. I'm gonna go to the book of Malachi. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cover this before I get to the shout out letters and the shout out uh donations for your brothers and sisters that love this truth and support this truth. I'm gonna show y'all something. Now I've gone over it many times before, and I'm gonna keep going over it until you get it in your head. Let's go to Malachi, the book of Malachi, chapter one. Watch this. Malachi chapter one. And I'm going to start at verse three. This is God speaking through Malachi. This is, I'm going to say it again. This is God speaking through Malachi. <laughs> it reads Malachi one and three. And I hated Esau. So does God hate? Yes, he hates Esau. Who is Esau? The Caucasian race. That's who they are. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. When did God lay the heritage of Esau waste? During the beginning of the Renaissance era, when black people overthrew the Roman Empire. I'm going to say it again. When black people overthrew the Roman Empire. Okay, Great Ages of Man, Imperial Rome by Time Life Books. All right, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to page 64 first. The men who ruled the empire. You got Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, Nero, Domitian, Trajan, Hadrian. Now, I want y'all to look at this guy here, Septimia. You see, you can see they got him as a Caucasian man. Okay. After him, you got Caracalla, Diocletian, Julian the Apostate. Mm, see these uh, four tetrarchs, these four guys with their noses knocked off? Hmm. That's for another lesson. <laughs> Let's go to the bottom of the page. Armies based in several of the provinces had already proclaimed their own commanders as emperor. And one of them, Septimius Severus, I see how the words cut off, Afri. Let's turn the page. Can, African by birth. So Septimius Severus, is what they called African by birth. So if that's the case, when we go back to page 64, how come the bust has him as a white man? This is how white people lie in their history books. This is what they do. They accept, they establish themselves as the commanders and leaders and great men of history. 
when in actuality, a lot of them was our own people. All right, now I'm going to African Presence in Early Europe, edited by Ivan Van Sertema. This picture is going to become very familiar to y'all here. <laughs> Let's go to page um, 223. All right, we're on page 223. African presence in the early history of the British Isles and Scandinavia. Let's go down to the bottom here. The Roman, the Roman occupation of England under the African emperor Septimius Severus. I want you to see that. The African emperor Septimius Severus who bought into England from Rome and from his home in Numidia, North Africa, large contingents of African officials and soldiers around 200 AD. For more complete information on this event, consult Burley. So this let, he let this author let you know that, Af, that Septimius Severus was an African emperor, a black emperor. He was an Israelite. That's what he really was. So back to Malachi chapter one and verse three. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. This is when Esau was taken down, conquered from 193 AD on up. He was dismantled by the uh, gladiators. And Septimius Severus was a main guy. He became emperor. He tried to hold on to Roman traditions and all that. And so did several of them after him, which were black emperors. But after a while, they got rid of all of that. And it, uh, it was the end of the pagan Roman Empire and ushered in the Holy Roman Empire. That's when black men and women sat on the throne. Verse four, Malachi one, verse four. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. What does it mean we will return? That's talking about the Renaissance era. That's when, remember the word Renaissance means rebirth. Rebirth of what? Rebirth of the white man in power in the earth. They began to systematically conquer us in um, Rome, Spain, Portugal, Norway, Amsterdam, so forth and so on. Constantinople. Now I'm going to show you a little bit on Spain. All right. Okay. Here is Spain, a history and art by Bradley Smith. Okay, there's a lot of whitewashing in this book, but I'm just going to show you some brief, brief history and things what Europeans have done to our history. I'm going to start off with page 59. All right. I'm on page, that's 58. I'll go to 59. Uh, okay. After Muslim conquest, many Christians were herded off into slavery along with all their livestock. Let's take a look at the Christians. So this is when the Muslim conquest. I want you to just take a look at these two guys right here being herded off with their livestock. Why are there two black men here? Because blacks at one time ruled Spain. We made the grievous mistake of allowing white people to join our military. Okay, we're always trying to join up with our enemies. Let's go to the next page. Now, I'm gonna go to the words first. Muslims brought few women with them from Africa. Instead, they made wives, concubine, concubines, or slaves of the Christian women captured in battle. These women are probably in a harem, judging from the revealing character of their dress. So I'm going to show you these two women. These are two Christian women, Christian women captured in battle. Let's pull back. Now you go, oh, two white women. I want you to look very closely at the fingertips. 
What, did they think, were they eating chocolate? Were they dipping their damn fingers in chocolate? Huh? No. These images were whitewashed. These were two Christian black women, okay? Possibly Jews, because I see they were dealing with the Magan David here or the Star of Molech here. Now they're white. This is what white people do. This is called iconoclasm when they whitewash black images. So again, these are two Christian women, but notice the fingers are black. Why? Because these images were clearly whitewashed. Whitewashed images. Let's go to the next page. As a serving woman brings food and wine, which though prohibited by Islam, <laughs> that should make you laugh. As a serving woman brings food and wine, which though prohibited by Islam, was much drunk in Muslim Spain. An attendant strums a medieval harp and two gentlemen converse in the 13th century manuscript illustration. I want y'all to see that they have no problem keeping the Muslims black. Okay. They had no issue with that. That sort of can push the false narrative that the Christians were all white and the Muslims were all black. Let's go to the next page. 64, 63, 65, I'm sorry. Early Spanish Christians, assisted by angels, harvest ripe grain and grapes. Wine flows out of press at lower ripe. Let's take a look. So this is a painting done in Spain of Christ at the time of harvest. This is to be Christ in the center or God in the center with angels around. Now, they're all very light, very light, very light. But I want you to take a closer look at the hands. Let's zoom in. You see the whitewashing? Look at the hands. Look here. Let's look at this one down here. All of these at one time were black like this one here. But what did white people do? They start to... Uh, taint the color. That's what they do. To what? To why? For what purpose? To hide the history that we ruled Spain at one time. All of Europe for a thousand years. Let's go to the next one. Armed with bows, lances, and swords, Christians from the northwest of Spain began fighting back soon after conquest. Okay, so you got some light looking guys here, but I want you to notice the darker hand complexions. Look at the faded faces. Look, uh, this one you can really tell they started to mess with, but didn't finish it. They didn't finish messing with them. Let's go, look, oh, 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 oh. Look at his hand, look at his face. Like my, look, it looks like the color of my skin. <laughs> but look at this hand. Already whitewashed. This is what these are Christians, and this is the hidden history that I don't want you to know that blacks were the Christians and Jews that ruled Spain and all of Europe for a thousand years. We were the armor bearers. We were the knights. We were all of those things before the conquest. All right. The image of the black and Western art from the early Christian era to the age of discovery, from the demonic threat to the incarnation of sainthood. Edited by David Beinman, which is a white man, Henry Louis Gates Jr. Now, on the cop showed you guys this book before. You see a black man in chained armor because we were the knights of the round table. Now, in this uh, segment, this series, I'm only dealing with Spain for the most part. I'm going to begin with page 80. I'm going to the book on page 80. Now, this is the same picture we saw in the last book, okay, where you have Moors or blacks playing chess in Spain. 
Again, these are blacks who ruled Spain playing chess. I'm going over to page 81, which is the next page. Dealing with sexual relations. Here the image confirms the law and how powerful and this time the more is black. You know why it says this time the more is black, meaning the black is black? Sometimes the Moors were Arabs, okay? Sometimes books, when they deal with the term more, they're meaning the black-skinned Arabs, okay, opposed to Negroes. But this time the more is black. So it is simply undeniable that in this particular case, the horror of miscegenation, that's the unlawful uh, sexual relations of two different races, redoubles the prohibition, pro, prohib, prohibition, I'm sorry, of sexual relations between persons of different religions. Hmm. Now, they, they say that this black was one of the white woman's, one of her moors, one of her blacks. Watch this. The painter was completely untouched by the monstrous idea of the burning of the black man, whom his owner, the mother-in-law, led into a trap of which he was the sole victim. So the only one who got who was the victim out of the sexual relations was the black man. Let's turn the page to see what they're talking about. Let me flip over. There we go. This is page 84. There's the black man, the moor. Oh, and a white woman is leading him to another white woman who's laying in bed. Uh, the black man is in bed with the white woman. Notice how the, 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 let me, she's telling someone that, oh, look, they're, they're in bed together. Then they get more people. Now notice his eyes are open over here. He's sleeping. She's sleeping here. Now, remember, this is in Spain. This is after they were conquered, conquered us. You had a few of our people still there, though. Look, notice he's in bed with the white woman. Everyone's around. Point, she's pointing. Look, look, look. They arrest him. They arrest the black man in Spain. And notice, they burn the black man alive. And the Antichrist Virgin Mary gives grace and mercy to the white woman. Then notice... That same white woman here, that's the same. She's given grace and mercy. She's praying to the Antichrist right there. That's baby Jesus, the white one, the demon, and the white Virgin Mary, so-called Virgin Mary. She's pointing up. Okay. Now, let's go back. Bear with me a second. All right. I'm going to page 82. Here, here, six pictures have to do with the conversion of a black moor. In the first, a Christian is urging him on. Next, he is struggling with the demon. Then the virgin comes to his assistance and encourages him to turn Christian. The moor accepts her advice and is baptized. And the last picture shows him determined to be a faithful Christian throughout his life. Now, remember, if you watched our um, In the Classroom lessons, I've showed you books where the, when the whites began to conquer us, they gave us two options, uh, death or slavery by becoming baptized as Christians, okay? Many of us fled, some of us were captured, and they made us slaves here in Spain. So again, this is in Spain, okay? Here's the black man talking with two Edomites. Here's the black man wrestling with a demon. Okay, which is Christianity. The Virgin Mary comes to talk to him. All right. He gives his life to the Antichrist. He's baptized in water. And now the black man becomes a faithful and devout heretic to the Antichristianity. See, this is the history that they don't show us in school. They refuse to teach us. And this is what I was saying here. I'm on page 86. 
you got black men under duress to either accept death or accept white Jesus, the Antichrist. Here they, one of them is getting baptized. He accepted the Antichrist. Hmm. Let's see what it says here. Possibly Michael Lupe, de, I can't pronounce that. In this recruit, two soldiers leading two Moors before a king, northeastern Spain, 1290 to 1310. This painting is currently in Los Angeles, J. Paul Getty Museum. That's this one. Uh, next one, 53. Possibly Michael Lupe, I can't pronounce it. The Baptism of Amor, Northeastern Spain, 1290 to 1310. That's this one. They made, he, he, ex he wanted life. He didn't want to be put to death. And he accepted white Jesus. You can't make this stuff up. Before the Mayflower, A History of Black America by Lerone Bennett Jr. I'm going to page 36. Y'all can read along with me. I'm going to start right here. Many, perhaps most, of the first generation of African Americans entered America with Spanish names for reasons that are not readily apparent. Many black males were called Antonio, a name that quickly became Antony or Anthony. Other popular names of the period included Michaela, Cuchacelo, Mingo, Pedro, Francisco, Jabina, Maria, Wortelo, Tomora, Angola, and Tony Congo. Now, look at this part here. For reasons that are not readily apparent. So, Lerone Bennett Jr., who is a scholar, was unaware of why these first or most of the first generation of African Americans came to America with Spanish names. Let's go across over here to page 37. The good servants came from, the good meaning the blacks, came from different backgrounds with different experiences. Some, as we have noted, came directly from England, where blacks had lived since the middle of the 16th century. Others came from Spain, Portugal, and the West Indies. Significantly, many were Christians, baptized either in Spain or Portugal or on the high seas. Now, we've explained that we were in England way before the middle of the 16th century, which is the 1500, way before that, okay? And some blacks came from Spain and Portugal. See, the notation or thought that all blacks, the blacks that came into slavery, came from Africa is incorrect. Did you notice that Lerone Bennett, where he gave a list of stating that the first uh, blacks that came to America had Spanish names for reasons that are not readily apparent because that history wasn't or has not been taught. That history has not been explained or taught in European schools. Most black scholars, I'm surprised uh, Henry Louis Gates um, allowed that white man, I forgot the guy's name, Bindman, whatever his name is, Henry Bindman or something like that, Henry, something Bindman, whatever it is. I don't give a dag on uh, write a lot of those negative things or writings regarding the great history of our fathers that ruled Europe. Well, reading a lot of the commentations that they put in that book, it, it's like Henry Louis Gates was either not in the room or he is a complicit agent to white supremacy. I don't know. I, I don't know. Only he can answer that. I can't answer for him. All right. So uh, the Bible goes on to say Malachi 1 verse 5. I'll just read it again real brief. So we don't forget the thought. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. That's when they came back during the Renaissance. Uh, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build the Renaissance, but I will throw down. That's Christ's second coming. And they shall call them, this is what they're going to call Esau, so-called white people, the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. For how long? For Ever. You can't change the Bible. You can't change it. Now, let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, and the protests regarding the death of our brother um, George Floyd, 
uh, Ahmaud Aubrey, Sean Reed, and uh, Brianna Taylor. And there were many others. Um, we've been getting emails, phone calls. People in the street have stopped us and said, where are you, Israelites? Where are you? We need you. You got to be out in the forefront. You must be in the front of this thing. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, something. We don't protest. We teach. We teach for our people to repent. See, why do our people protest? Is it so much that we want equal rights? Um, we want the police to uh, suffer the same judgment that we would receive if we murder or kill someone? Is that it? Is it just the police, though? What about the civilians, the father and son that murdered Ahmaud Aubrey? They were not police. They were civilians. Nobody talks about that. You're going to find that it's not just the police. The police are used as a tool against our people. Now, remember, when the police are used nine out of ten times, there's some white woman or white man who calls them and lies on us. So you men and women in the streets, you have these same people that's calling the cops on you, join with you, hijacking the protest, burning that. Let me tell you what a woman said. A woman, when the camp went out to teach, she said, by us reading the Bible, we're preaching hate. She said, that's hate. She told everybody that came out to listen. No, no, don't listen. They hate. That's filled with hate. They hate. Let me tell you what hate is. Let me tell you. Hate is generally dictated by power, by means, by actions. Not so much by reading. Let me explain what I mean by that. You're in the streets burning down white homes, white businesses, white establishments, white people's cars. You're burning them down. I've seen many videos where you're beating some people in the streets. That's not hate, though. That's not hate. Us reading a book. Standing on a corner reading is hate. See, the mind of a nooker is insane. I mean, uh, the mind of a nooker is insane. You know what the problem is? The problem is you thought you were brought to this country as a slave to live the American dream. The only time you see the American dream, black man and black woman, is when you are asleep. REM sleep, when your eyes is moving like that and you're in that deep deep sleep. What, let me show you something. Let's go to the book of Micah. M-I-C-A-H. Micah. Bear with me. Now, I'm going to take us through some scriptures now. I need y'all to follow along. I need y'all to follow along. Micah 2 verse 10. It reads, Arise ye and depart. This is the Lord's message for our people. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. Do you hear what God says? This is not your rest. The United States of America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, is not our rest. You thought you were brought here as slaves to rest, live, and prosper forever and ever here. Oh, how wrong you are. It says, arise ye and depart. Meaning, wake up to this truth and let's get ready to go home. For this is not your rest because it is polluted. If you didn't realize America is a polluted nation, Babylon the Great is polluted. God's telling you it's polluted right here. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. What does it mean it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction? God has prophesied. God has determined that by Babylon the Great, the United States of America, has a limited time of existence. Let me say it again. Babylon the Great has a limited time of existence. When you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse four, watch this, watch this. It reads, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Who is my people? The Israelites. You can read that in Matthew two, verse six. Only the Israelites are God's people. The 12 tribes, no other people on earth are God's people. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people that you be not partakers in her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. When you read down to verse uh, uh, nine, nine and 10, it tells you what's gonna happen. It says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication 
and live deliciously with her, meaning the kings of the other nations, the prime ministers, the presidents, so forth and so on, they have lived deliciously with America based on the policies America set forth for them and shall bewail her. It says, uh, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. America is prophesied to be burned with nuclear fire. Let's read on verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, the United States of America, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Whoa, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this. So God has determined and prophesied this place is destined for destruction. And here you black men and black women, Latin men and Latin women, you in the streets burning down stuff, not because you are rioting to uh, get ready to leave. Mm, no, 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 no. You are burning things down because you want to assimilate. You want the love of white society. Let me tell you something. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're not going to get the love and respect of white folks. Sure, one or two of you may succeed if you can sing and dance, uh, dance a jig, throw a ball in a hoop. Sure, rap a little bit. Sure, you might get a little attention, but it's only going to last but so long. That's why many of our brothers and sisters who have lived the life of Riley here, you have lived the American dream here. That's why another verse Christ said, what shall it profit you if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? That's why I made that statement. Now, for a minute, let's go back to the book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. I'm in chapter 4 now and verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. See, we as the Israelites, we understand that we are here and we are in pain. That pain covers a plethora of things. The pain deals with us trying to strive to reach our people from America to Africa to Europe to Pakistan, India, Iran and Iraq, there's pain involved. Us losing our jobs, losing our home, losing many things, we're in pain. But the Lord has a remnant of men and women who will do this work. Let's read that again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. See, a lot of you want to sit home. You just want to watch videos. I want you to notice that word, be in pain and labor. Labor to bring forth. You know what the word labor means? Work. You got to be about this work. I know some of you cannot be in the streets warring with us to get the truth out. That's understandable. It may be you may have a particular position or ailment or anything. You have your reasons, but you can still support this truth. You can still support this truth financially and with prayer. You can. So let's read that again. Micah 4 verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, meaning out of Jerusalem, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. The Babylon is talking about is Babylon the great, the United States of America. Watch this. There shalt thou be delivered. That's how we know it's not talking about ancient Babylon, which is Iraq. This says from this Babylon, there shalt thou be delivered. We're going to be delivered from here. It says, there the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Our what? Thine enemies. From the hand of thine enemies. See, you thought you was brought here to serve slavery with friends. You think Becky is your friend. Becky's my wife. Becky's your enemy. You have no idea. Or Chuck. You married Chuck. Chuck is your enemy. I'm reading the Bible. If you got a problem... Take it up with God. Send him an email, please. Now, watch this. Let's go to Amos 3. So why don't we join with Black Lives Matter? First off, you need to understand this simple thing. In Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's a fundamental, a basic fundamental principle when it comes to doing business or allying yourself with anyone. The two of you must agree. And for some reason, black men, black women, Latin men, Latin women, you have become ignorant to that principle. Watch this. First Corinthians 1 and 10. Let's see if it changes in the New Testament. Let's see if you can be all about different beliefs and come together. 
1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 reads, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Let's read that part again. That ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Unity, solidarity. You black men and black women, Latin men, Latin, you have not learned unity yet. You've been brought up as slaves here, and I'm an individual. I'm an individual. I do what I want to do. Mm -mm. See, white men, this is what you got to understand about white people. They work as a collective. They work as a collective. That's why when somebody does not want to do any business with America, you can't do business with no European country. Or what happened? You get an embargo. You get sanctioned. Yeah, you can't deal. You cannot buy or sell, trade. That's the mark of the beast. That's the mark of the beast, baby. <laughs> I know you thought it was a microchip. Now, I ain't saying they ain't trying to co co uh, create the little stupid thing, but that's not the mark of the beast. So from there, now that we understand biblically, we must be of one mind, one accord, that we all speak the same thing. Let's examine what does our brothers and sisters in Black Lives Matter believe. All right. Is Black Lives Matter what we believe? Now, I'm not reading all of this. I just want you to see some key points. Ah, uh, Trayvon Martin, I mentioned him. Ferguson, Black Lives Matter Global. We acknowledge respect. We are unapologetically black. No, you're not. Ah, uh, we are soft flex. Okay. All righty then. Let's read that. We make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. So transgender men and women will lead. We are self-reflexive and do the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege. That means um, the male-female relationships. Dismantle cisgender is when you relate to the gender that's on your birth certificate. If you're a man, you're a man when you're born. If you're a woman, you're a woman when you're born. That's what birth certificate says. So they want to dismantle that. They want to dismantle cisgender privilege and uplift black trans folk, especially black trans women who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. Wow. Okay. God is not here. The Lord has left the building. Hmm. Anything else I wanted out of here? Okay. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. That's man, woman, children. We disrupt the Western prescribed family nuclear family structure requirement by just supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. Wait a minute, what is this next part here? Oh God, let me see. We foster queer affirming, we foster a queer affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking, heteronormative th thinking, or rather, the belief that all in the world are heterosexual, unless she, he, or they disclose otherwise. And you know, I can't read no more of this. What the hell is going on here? So this is what Black Lives Matter believes. Now, do y'all think God is about transgendered men and women? Do you think that's acceptable in the Bible? Just open your Bible and read it. You can read Romans 1 where it talks about same-sex relations are forbidden with God. You can read Leviticus 20, 
You can read Leviticus 18, which gives you a list of sexual no-nos, okay? Hebrews 13, verse 4 says, Marriage is honorable. Marriage between a man and a woman is honorable, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, <clears throat> the brothers went out to the protest, and let me show you the hatred our black women, our black sisters into this queer nation, this lesbian, transgender stuff. They have such a hatred for the Bible. You, I, it's, it's a, it, it shocked me. I'm stuttering here spiritually. I'm stuttering because the sister, she hated, it's like, and these are Christians, quote unquote, Christians. Listen to me when I tell you this. These black men and women, particularly the women, are Christians. They go to church every Sunday. They have a devout hatred for the Bible. All they want to say is, God bless you. See you next Sunday. See you on Christmas Day. Stop smoking cigarettes. I love Jesus. I love the Lord. But when you start to read the Bible, they have a hatred. They have a hatred for God. Watch this. This is talking to us. What's going to happen when we break God's laws? Now listen up. To observe to do all his commandments. To observe to do what? All his commandments. You know what the sum of the commandment is? says? Thou shalt not kill. Oh boy. That commandment does stand the chest in the black community. Thou shalt not kill. You might say it to yourself. That's an easy commandment. But guess what? Black on black crime is worse than police on black crime. That's the truth. I know you don't want to hear it, sis, but that's the truth. You guys hear? You got sis, sis. I understand what you say. Go ahead, go ahead. Why do white crime just have way out black on black crime? That's a narrative the media try to put out there. And yes, we're gonna kill our own weak family. And yes, we're gonna kill our own weak family. And yes, we're gonna kill our own weak family. So killing the throat comes from our own community. Just Are you saying because, because we're family, we can kill each other? Is, am I am I am I hearing right? That's what I, that's what I said. Now, you heard it for yourself. So she believes or statistics say because we're family, uh, we're going to kill each other. It's okay to kill each other. Thou shalt not kill. They don't want to hear that law. Uh, they didn't want to hear the law of Deuteronomy 22 and 5 where it teaches women how to dress. <clears throat> they didn't want to hear the law about man is the head of the woman. Christ is the head of man. God is the head of Christ. No, don't want to hear none of that. Again, and these are Christians. So no, brothers and sisters, we're not marching in the streets, acting foolish. We're not burning down supermarkets, supermarkets, nor grocery stores. Let me tell you something about that stupidity. You're supposed to have a plan. If you want to destroy something in your neighborhood, you better have a plan B. See, look, the reality of this riot still ain't kick in for y'all yet. See, y'all motherfuckers still ain't ran out of milk. Y'all still ain't ran out of food. Y'all still ain't sold all them clothes and, and spent all that little money y'all y'all got off all that shit. The reality ain't set in yet. It ain't up until you motherfuckers ran out of money, until you motherfuckers ran out of food, until you motherfuckers ain't got none of them clothes. And where you where, where you think you're going to get all the rest of that shit at? Because it ain't going to be from none of them stores that you you got you, you jay down on because them bitches gone. So... And I already see people post the status. Man, we finna go to Little Village for groceries. We no, you not. <laughs> Cause I tell you, like the like the brother said, when reality sets in, and you need milk for your babies, uh, pampers, diapers, whatever, you need something for your wife, uh, whatever, with feminine hygiene products, soap, whatever, and you ain't got it, reality gonna kick you in your behind, and you are gonna realize that the neighboring. Uh, communities around you, they're going to say, get the hell out of here. Y'all ain't destroying our neighborhood. I'm just telling you. All I can do is tell you and warn you. Now, I'm going to go to um, Romans 13. Watch this. Romans 13. Here's another one of God's laws. Because, of course, we, as, 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 as men, as women, we, get we can get very emotional and we want to take part in the melee. But this is what God says here in Romans 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. What does it mean, not in rioting? Rioting is when you go out into the streets, burning your neighborhood down, burning down the grocery store, 
okay? Burning police departments, burning Walmart, burning whatever, burning it down, overturning cars, burning them, okay? Throwing bricks, breaking windows. That's rioting. God says, don't do that. I'm, all I can tell you is what the Bible says. It says, verse 13 again, Romans 13, verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. What is these marches about? Strife and envyings. Strife, because what? You want to assimilate into society. You want society to accept you and they're never going to accept you. Marching does not work. Martin Luther King marched and what did they do to him? Killed him. Now, violence is the, even though nonviolence is the way, no justice, no peace, no justice. Boom! They kill Martin Luther King. Y'all simple as hell. Y'all don't realize that this is Babylon the Great, okay? The mother of harlots, okay? Oh, gosh, I don't understand some of y'all. Watch this. I'm going to go to 1 Peter 4.4. 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter four, verse four, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of right. Our people think it's strange that the Israelites, Israel United in Christ, IUIC, does not run with them to the same, what did it say? That you run not with them to the same excess of riot. Y'all looking at us like we crazy. Listen, we obey the Bible. We obey God's laws. It says, speaking evil of you, now you hate us. You cannot stand us. Y'all don't want to burn down the thing with us. We hate you. Y'all don't want to be in the front of the line and get shot with rubber bullets and beat upside the head so that we can have the right to be homosexuals and lesbians and queer and what LGBTQRSTUV WXYZ. Damn it. So now you're mad. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. God's going to judge us all. The quick are those that are converted and the dead are those spiritually dead men and women. Verse five, uh, verse six, I'm sorry. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Now this dead here, Again, the gospel was preached to them that are spiritually dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh. Oh, 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 hold on, pump the brakes. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh. You like to run around black man, black woman, Latin man, you can't judge me. Men in the flesh judge you every day. Let me say it again. Men in the flesh judge you every day. When you black women, you want child support. What do you do? You take a nigga to court. Oh, he, he don't want to pay the child support. Nah, 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 nah. Judge him. You brothers know what I'm talking about. You're judged every day by men in the flesh. And not near one of you ever run to the white men and say, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Nah, nah, nah. Why don't you say that in court? But you say it to Israelites on the street, and all we're doing is reading the Bible. Verse 6 again. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. I keep warning y'all. The end of all things is at hand. The end of this white man's world is near. That's what Peter is saying here. But it says, be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Y'all better watch unto prayer. That's all I can say to y'all, all right? Now, y'all saying, but we're being afflicted. They are killing us in the streets. Yes, they are. and we see it. And believe me, God sees it. Now watch this. Just follow along with me. Bear witness. Okay, Hosea. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15 reads, God says this, I will go and return to my place. Christ ascended in Acts chapter one. He ascended on high. I will go and return to my place. Till, till when? 
till they acknowledge their offense. Have you black men, black women, Latin men and Latin women acknowledged your offense? That you as the Israelites have broken every commandment of God as you do this day. As you do this day. Have you acknowledged that yet? No, you haven't. Watch what it says next. It says, till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. To seek God's face means to repent of your sins. Read the Bible and learn as an Israelite. Have you done that? Mm -mm. It says, in their affliction, they will seek me early. Let me read it again. In their affliction. They will seek me early. God has prophesied that we are going to be afflicted here in Babylon the Great. Some of us are going to die. Some of us are going to get beat. Some of us are going to get whipped, maced, pepper sprayed, beat with a, a, a baton. That's what is prophesied in the Holy Bible. Watch this. And I keep telling y'all this. Let me go to, let me go to Joel. The book of Joel. Before I close out on, on the on the reading of the scriptures. Bear with me a second. Bear with me. Let me find it. Okay. I've been telling y'all before. Y'all y'all upset with the police. President Trump has already mo mobilized the National Guard. I'm going to say it again. President Trump has already mobilized the National Guard. Uh, and what comes after the National Guard? The United States military, their army. OK, you got police agencies bowing the knee to protesters. Now, you might think that's all well and good, but it is a sign of you may call it a sign of compassion, but it's a sign of weakness to any anarchist out there who can take advantage of a foolish police officer bending the knee, turning his back to rioters. I'm just telling you like it is. I'm telling you as I see it. I'm telling you real talk. So now President Trump is saying, you know what? The governors, the mayors are not handling it right. I might have to mobilize or activate the National Guard. Y'all don't want that. Y'all don't want that. It may happen. Eventually it's going to happen. The Bible already says it's going to happen. If it's this time, I don't know. The troubles we're having here in America is like a woman's childbirthing pains. Like you read about a woman in travail all through the Bible. Let me read this to you. Joel chapter 2 verse 18. Okay. It says, then will the Lord be jealous for his land. That's our land over in Israel and pity his people. His people have been scattered from North, Central, South America, Africa, Europe, Pakistan, Iran, Iran, Iraq. You can read that in Joel, the third chapter, verse two to six. It explains that we're scattered. So let's read it again. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. I'm in Joel two, verse 18 and pity his people. God's going to have pity on us. Verse 19, yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. Those are the elect that return to him. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Right now, we are a reproach amongst the heathen. Our people are talking about as a whole. Niggas, spicks, that's what they call us. All men are monkeys, monkey this, monkey that, wet backs. Uh, uh, all kind of names. Y'all name it. Y'all can put it in the description box. I don't give a dag on. But that's that's what it means when it says, "And I will make no more, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen." The heathen is the so-called white man and the other nations, the Arabs, the Chinese, the Japanese. Verse twenty. Watch this. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. <clears throat> wait, wait. Hold on. Let's read that again. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. This lets you know that the armies of the United States will be on the land here. Okay? They, something is going to occur. They're going to be utilized here. But God said, I'm going to remove them. Don't worry. I'm going to remove them. Watch this. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate. That's the Middle East, what they call the Middle East. With his face toward the East Sea, that's the Dead Sea, and his hinder part, toward the utmost sea, that's the Mediterranean Sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things. God's going to destroy the Northern Army, the armies of North America. God said, I'm going to destroy them with their face toward, what does it say? With his face toward the East Sea, that's the Dead Sea, and their hinder part toward the utmost sea, that's the Mediterranean Sea. God is destined, he laid it out a map for us 
If we just obey, we'll be all right, Israel. We will be okay. All right, now let's get to our readings, okay? We got some letters here. We got some letters here. Uh, this is from Mr. and Mrs. Oh, God. I know a woman wrote this. I think I can't read this. Handwriting. You see that? All right. Shalom, most high blessed in Christ. I like to thank the Lord for chosen and sending you brothers out in the world to teach our people repentance. You're all doing such a great work and excellent uh, and job that you were born to do. Thank you. I pray that the most high will open the spiritual eyes and ears of our people that the good news you are bringing to those who are hungry for the truth. Thank you so much. All praises to the Lord. All praises. This is from Mary Simeon. Mary Simeon, uh, a.k.a. Jay Cabrera. Uh, Shalom, Bishop and leadership here. I continue to support the troops like I always do. I give a, a big salute to a job well done. Lord's will, I continue. My loyal and faithful donations, please pray for me as I endure all my trials and tribulations. Most high in Christ, bless Mary. Thank you, Mary. Uh, all praise to the Lord, Mary. We're going to definitely send a prayers for you. This, I believe, a Christian sent. It's just John 3, 16. And the world that is spoken of here, you can read the precept in Isaiah 45, 17, John 18, 20. The world is the world of the Israelites. It is not the world, meaning all people on the planet Earth. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, whosoever, the whosoever is explained in uh, Acts 2, verse 21. Whosoever of the children of Israel, ye men of Israel, hear these words. So you Christians, there's nothing that you're going to send us to make us go, oh, let's turn around and pray to white Jesus again. The Antichrist, the image of the beast. Let's go back to it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. This is from Avaya. All praises. It says, show them leadership. May this be a blessing to our family and where it is in to our family and where it is needed. Put it for where it is needed. Most high in Christ bless you all. Thank you so much, Avaya. Thank you. <clears throat> this one is from Brother Drew. Uh, Brother Drew. Enclosed is a money order as a donation toward the cause of waking and uniting Israel everywhere. It's not much, yet my plan is to make it regular. Since watching your videos, I sort of feel like a prodigal son. All of us do. All praises. Praise the Most High. So that I know it reached you, I ask that someone let me know. Please call or text me at, and he gave his number. We're gonna, I'm definitely going to send this to Deacon Asaph so that he can call you. All right. This one is from Brother Adino. The I in Adino is pronounced I. I. Adino. Or Brother Adino. Shalom. I said, okay, this is it right here. Dear Bishop Nathaniel, Shalom, Most High in Christ, blessed. I am finally able to write the man of God that has helped me transition into a new creature. I know you don't favor long letters, so I'll be brief. Thank you for being that trumpet in my head. This is one hell of a ride into the kingdom, but a ride of affliction I fully embrace. I am an avid reader of the Bible, but my resource for deeper understanding is limited. I'm about three and a half years old in this truth. But the Most High has opened my understanding. I only know what I'm allowed to know, but I'm hoping you can assist me in furtherance of wisdom and proper application. I've been in prison over 17 years and currently have 17 more years to go. Wow. I'm not asking for anything other than to learn from you or someone you appoint. I'm 48 years of age and the Most High called me forth for a purpose. Brothers are busy with various degrees of problems. And of course, not many would find it tasteful dealing with a man under such a horrible condition. So I'm asking you to help me, but not out of pity, but out of love. All praises. Yes, sir. I pray the Most High raise you up further and you sit before kings and powerful men for the setting of the controversy, settling of the controversy and the gathering of the rest of the flock. Most High in Christ bless. Sincerely, Brother Adino. All right, he gave his ribs. I'll send this to, uh, oh, he writes this. My ribs number, he gives the phone number. In case you have questions, you may need to know. Her name is, he gives her name, 
Hearing from you or Deacon Yawasat would make her day. Pray for her, please. All praises. Yes, brother, a dino. Definitely putting that on the side there. I got to handle that. All right, this is from our sister, Patricia. Hello, brothers. How are you doing? I give the Most High glory for the good work you have been putting in. May the Most High God continue to grant you knowledge and wisdom. Please pray for me when all of this is over. Can please bring school in Des Moines, Iowa. Please do not say my name out loud. <laughs> well, sister, sister, all right. I didn't say your full name, for all praises. Uh, yeah, no, I told you I don't read the letters in advance. All right. Uh, Shalom. I pray that leadership, can, this is from Mo. I pray that leadership continues to stay in the spirit while bringing forth truth and knowledge. I thank the Most High God for sending IUIC to show what's required of me. Special thanks to those behind the scene who works half, half, um, Mm, whose works, oh, special thanks to those behind the scene whose works, who work hard to help bring the truth out. Okay, I got it. Please pray for me that I continue to build myself in God's laws. Most high in Christ, bless Mo. All praises. All praises. All right. Uh, this one, I believe, is either Dee Dee or Dre Dre. All right, let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to try and read quick. Y'all know I don't like big letters. Dear leadership, just a quick letter to follow up my recent phone calls. I called a few weeks ago regarding the Washington, D.C. school. I left a brief message, wanted the exact location. Oftentimes, D.C. will be used as a general landmark. But after further research, you'll find out that what you've inquired about is many, many miles away from the actual city. The precarious times we lived in coupled with the malfunctioning of my business cell phone may have given the impression that the calls were made with nefarious intentions. This letter is to inform you that nothing could be further from the truth. It was never meant to seduce, to induce stress or paranoia. We were introduced to IUIC about four years ago along with several other groups to be completely transparent while doing black history research. At the time, I was little more than, at, at the time it was little more than information. After circling back, we've made it official. The pandemic allowed us to slow down and consider all our ways. My family and I have been keeping the Sabbath for over a month. OMG, oh my God. The children love the outro for the current videos. No, we're not here for pretty pictures, but Bishop, the images speak to us, LOL. Please share this with Deacon Asaph. I may have unintentionally added fuel to his internal flame. My messages were left for him simply because I was up late and happened upon his Friday night roar. I can't do it every Friday because the hours he keeps is for the young blood, LOL. Enclosed is the money order that I'm finally able to send because I stayed up again. Someone commented on, on the time at the four, four o'clock hour. And then just as I was about to sign off, I heard something about an address. The Lord blessed me. I needed that address. It was one of the questions I had for Deacon Asaph, but I kept missing his calls. Do with the funds as you see fit. We've always felt our giving is, is between us and the Lord, so had intentions of not including our names. The wisdom of 1 Thessalonians 5 22 prompted me to include all the details I could remember in a letter, so perhaps everything could be processed in context. I too can be skeptical, but I didn't want to be disobedient when I knew we were supposed to donate. After the missed calls, it dawned on me IUIC has a huge undertaking and it and it has and it has come and it has trials. I'm sorry it has to be that way. I hope it helps to know in this case you can put the spear down. Peace and blessings. I think the name is Dre Dre or Dee Dee. Dee. I can't tell. But Dee Dee, I'll make sure Deacon Asaph gets this letter and he may be familiar with what you're referring to. So I'll put this letter to the side too. All right. Last but not least is from Ms. Pat. My daughter introduced me to your videos on YouTube. She knew I struggled for years trying to read the Bible and understand it. I could never sit still in church because they weren't teaching the Bible. 
I want to thank you, Bishop, deacons, captains, all men who are teaching. I'm getting ready for what's to come in November regarding the coronavirus. Here's a tip that the nurses are suggesting to one another. Here at my place of work to take organic coconut oil, all praises, organic coconut oil, oil use a Q-tip and dip it in the oil, rub one end of it in the nose and the other side of the Q-tip opposite the nostril. Uh, the, what is this word? The basis, I think that says, the basis, buses. I can't see what this word is right here. What is this word with my finger at? I can't read that. Not sure the, the something of the is that, ah, is that the virus is a sticky one that it won't stick to you. Okay, so she's saying, Put coconut oil on a Q-tip, organic, organic coconut oil on a Q-tip. Dip it in oil, rub it one end in the nose with a Q-tip and a Q-tip opposite nostril and dip the other side of the Q-tip and use the other nostril. Okay, so that the virus will not stick to the hairs inside your nose. I don't, I don't, I don't see the harm in this, but I will continue wearing my mask regardless. Thank you, Sister Pat. Thank you so much, Miss Pat, for your addition to this, helping us. All praises to the Lord. Uh, so now I want to get up to the shout outs. Again, we did the shout out letters, now doing shout out donations. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buffett, thank you. All praises to the Lord. Uh, Mary Simeon, thank you so much. Um, uh, B. Wright, thank you so much. Uh, mm, Pamela H., thank you so much. All praises. All right. This one has uh, whoever this is. Look, 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 look. I'm just going to turn it around so y'all know I'm not making this up. They didn't put any name or nothing on it. Listen, oh, God in heaven. I'm going to fill it in. I uh, U I C. All right. I'll fill it in for you. You didn't even put your name on it, so I put it in for you. Thank you so much. You know who you are. I don't know who you are, but the Lord knows who you are, and you know who you are. Praises. This one, uh, we want to thank you. It says Booster Club, and let me cover the amount, and I'm going to just show you the signature on it, on it. I can't read that. I can't read that. Uh, Mr. Malik, all praises. Thank you, Malik. Uh Patricia, thank you so much. Darda D, thank you so much. <laughs> Linwood HB, thank you so much. Mm. Another one, I can't read this, but thank you so much. Sheila K and Jada R, thank you so much. Uh, another one, I can't read this, but thank you so much, all praises. Uh, Alpha J, thank you, Alpha J, all praises. Lorinda E, thank you, Lorinda. Ah, this one I haven't heard in a while. JV Tijmul, you all praises to the Lord, thank you so much. Patricia AL, thank you so much. All praises to, oh, wait a minute. Last but not, no, this ain't last but not least, I'm sorry. Linda S. Let me tell you something, I gotta show this one, Linda. Hopefully the bank don't give me a hard time. Uh, you put tithe IUIC as a name of the organization. Don't put the word tithe there. Just put IUIC is fine. IUIC is the uh, doing the DBA that we're under. Don't put the word tithe. Hopefully the teller don't go, who's tithe? I go, oh, God. Oh, praises though. Thank you so much. Uh, little David, thank you so much. And last but not least, Palalila, I thank you all praises to the Lord. So brothers, sisters, you know how I like to do. I like to say, stay faithful, stay focused, but most of all, let's stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Love you. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission.
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth.